Lembaga Tabung Angkatan Tentera declared its lowest ever dividend of 2% compared with a minimum of 6% paid over the past four and a half decades. Chief Executive Nick Amlizan Mohamed says the point to make is that no entity should pay dividends without funds to do so in place. When asked if LTAT could return to giving out dividends of at least 6% this year, LTAT Chairman Tan Sri Mohamed Zahidi Zainuddin says that while 2019 will be another challenging year, it should be plain sailing come 2020. Zahidi adds that while LTAT wishes they could announce higher dividends, it is much better than announcing dividends that it can't afford to pay. LTAT's gross income was down by 19.8% at $423.9 million for FY18, while its unaudited net profit was 51.9% down to 221 million ringgit, compared with 459.5 million in FY17. LTAT registered positive retained earnings of 38.7 million for FY18 compared with accumulated losses of 178.8 million ringgit for FY17. Nick Amlizan explained that earnings were negatively impacted by the implementation of Malaysian Financial Reporting Standard and impairments on Baustad Heavy Industries Corp. She adds that it would also be premature to discuss the disposal of any assets at the current time, saying that it would only be done if it benefits LTAT's members. As at end 2018, total assets under management stood at 9.4 billion ringgit. Ringgit. Ex-1MDB CEO Datuk Sharul Azral Ibrahim Helmi told High Court today that he was unaware that the ABA Investment PJS Limited 1MDB paid 576.94 million US dollars to as a security deposit for a corporate guarantee was not a subsidiary of the International Petroleum International Corp or IPIC. ABA BVI was in fact a company incorporated by fugitive Low Tech Joe and his associates. Sharul testified that he only realised the difference between between the real ABA and ABA BVI later when it made the news. The real subsidiary of IPIC does not have limited in its name. When asked by prosecutor Datuk Sri Gopal Sri Ram why the lack of suspicion, Sharul said it appeared to be a legitimate government-to-government initiative. Sharul added that there also seemed to be a sense of urgency in the business dealings which made it more difficult for the transaction to be scrutinised. According to Sharul, Low had interjected the element of urgency so that the Abu Dhabi host did not change their minds. He also went on to highlight that the transaction was approved by the then Finance Minister, Datuk Sri Najib Raza, only three days after a letter was sent to the ministry by 1MDB. This, according to Sharul, underscored the sense of urgency by Najib himself as well. TH Plantations, the plantation arm of Lembaga Tabung Haji, has dismissed its long-serving CFO, Mohamed Azman Shah Isha, after a two-month-long suspension. He had been served a show cause letter on August 9th after the new management undertook a forensic audit. In a statement to Bursa, TH Plant said that the dismissal was made after due deliberation upon evaluating Mohamed Azman's reply to the show cause letter. He was appointed as TH Plant CFO in January 2010 and has been with the group since October 2002. In the interim, responsibilities and functions of the CFO will be carried out by Assistant GM Marliana Omar and Senior Finance Manager Hamida Hassan. TH Plan has yet to make public the findings of the audit. However, it should be noted that the company has been struggling over the past few quarters. For the first half of FY19, the group had recorded a net loss of $27.2 million compared with a net profit the year before. Top line also dropped, almost 15% for the period to $221.4 million. Ringgit. The group also took a massive impairment hit in FY18 from its unit Bumi Surya Ventures to the tune of 244 million ringgit, which reduced its book value by two thirds. Shares in Green Packet were among the most actively traded on the bourse today, with the counter moving up 2.65% earlier in the day to trade around 77.5 cent. However, the stock was unable to hold on to its gains, closing unchanged at 75.5 cent, with almost 26 million shares traded. Quoting Executive Director Tan Kei Yen, the Edge Financial Daily reported that earnings from its e-wallet KippoPay would put it back on the road to profitability in 2021. Tan said that KippoPay, which had posted Posted a gross transaction value of 20 million ringgit in 2017, is expected to see a GTV of 300 million ringgit this year and as much as 1 billion ringgit next year.
Casino Top Holdings has terminated its agreement with Executive Director and Major Shareholder Datuk Justin Su Te Ting for its planned acquisition of builder Asian Max Corp for 96 million ringgit. Sinotop said the mutual termination was due to prevailing market conditions. Su had, via a letter dated September 30th, mutually agreed to review, reevaluate, and renegotiate the terms and conditions upon which the acquisition was proposed to be implemented, signed on April 23rd. According to its Bursa announcement, Sinotop said that following the termination, the two parties would enter into good faith discussions and negotiations for a period of six months with a view towards agreeing with the newly revised terms and conditions. To recap, in April this year, Su had proposed to sell his entire stake in Asian Max in a cash and share deal involving new shares and new irredeemable convertible preference shares.